So uh, I'm going to be using uh, my Ibanez SG-1 base. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and plug that into uh, my Personas uh, firebox that I've got. So I'm just going to take the audio cable out of my, my uh, bass guitar, obviously, right? And I'm going to plug that into the Personas. So once you've plugged uh, into your Personas, all you really need to do is go into Ableton uh, to do the other half. Now uh, on the Personas on the Firebox, you will want to uh, do some volume tweaking, of course. And I find that, you know, really what you just want to do is um, you want to play the bass a little bit and adjust the volume on the firebox. You want to get a good level, but if you go up too high, you are going to hear noise. And this is going to be true of just about any audio interface uh, that you happen to be using. So just be careful with the volume a little bit and you should get a setting that you like. So uh, let's go ahead and go into Ableton now. There's really just a couple things that we need to set up in Ableton in order to uh, get the bass guitar to talk to Ableton and into the amp plugin. And uh, one of those things that we're going to do is on the audio track that uh, we have open in Ableton, we need to click in the audio from section and select the input that our bass guitar is plugged into. I'm using input one, so I'm just going to click on input one right here. And that's just a normal mono audio input. So now if I arm this track for recording, I can see and I can hear my bass a little bit, but obviously there's not much amplification to it. So that's where amp comes in handy, of course. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to drag the amp plugin onto my audio track right here. And I can hear already that this is starting to add some amplification. But now what I also need to do is I need to pair amp up with cabinet, which is another plugin. And cabinet is uh, essentially going to emulate a speaker cabinet that I would be running this amplifier into. So I can select a lot of different speaker types right here and I'll just select on the four by 10 bass. I can change the, uh, the microphone location, which is pretty cool. And uh, I can also change the type of mic and the output. So I'm going to stick with a near on axis mic. And then one other thing that I need to do is in amp, I need to select the bass preset. So I'm going to click on bass. So now I've got bass uh, here in my, in my preset. And what this is, is just a, a preset that is going to be mainly aimed towards the bass guitar. And so now if I play this amp paired up with cabinet, I'm going to hear my bass guitar. And so now I can record the bass in Ableton. And one useful thing to do here in Ableton is to give yourself a little bit of count in for recording, especially if you're going to be recording, let's say, a lot of different bass clips and things like that. So you want to click on Live, go to Preferences, and if you're on the PC, you can just open the Preferences uh, from the Options menu. And I'm going to click on Record Warp Launch. And then right here, uh, where it says Count In, I'm just going to go with 1. Because what this is going to do is it's going to give me a little uh, one bar count in just a one, two, three, four that will get me ready for recording. Another thing that's uh, really good to do here is to take a look at your latency settings for your sound card. Uh, so if you click on audio and take a look at uh, the latency settings here uh, for whichever your sound card you might be working with, um, you want to go ahead and try to shoot for the lowest buffer size that you can get uh, in Ableton. So if you drop this back and, uh, and test to see how much latency you're getting when you're playing, you'll start to find exactly how far you can push it. And you'll basically want to play and then see uh, if the sound you know, sounds like there's actually latency, as if it's uh, almost being played later out of your speakers, or if it sounds pretty normal as if you're plugged into a regular amplifier. So you want to shoot for the lowest latency that you possibly can. And uh, by doing that, you're going to assure that you're going to get the most natural playing experience and, of course, the uh, least amount of latency on any recording that you're doing. And now, if I start recording a clip, I'll get a little count in and I can play my bass.
can't say if I play that back, I'll hear my bass being played, of course. So now I can make changes to the virtual uh, amp right here and I can change the gain and so on and so forth. I can also use all the other effects that are available to me from Ableton to add uh, delays and things like that and really kind of build sort of my dream bass rig or guitar rig, whichever you might play. So now let's say that I want to take all of these bass clips that I've recorded and I want to export them out of live and use them in another sampling program or something like that. Well, if I play just the audio clips without them running into amp and cabinet, they're not gonna really sound like too much anything. So what I need to do is I need to export them out of Ableton uh, while being played through amp and cabinet. So what I can do is I can click on the first audio clip that I've recorded and then I can click, I can hold shift and click to the last one and this will select all of the clips from number one till my final one. Now I can click and I can drag and I can drop these into my arrange view and now here in arrange I can drag and drop them onto the audio track and now that they're here on this audio track what I can do is I can select each one individually and I can set my locators to just that clip if I want and I can export just that clip. So now I could go through and for each one of these I can do an export. I could also put these on different tracks and then do an export that would give me each track as its own individual audio file, whichever works for you. Uh, it depends on how many clips you're going to be exporting out of Ableton, of course. So all I need to do is go ahead and select a range right there and then I can click on file and go to export audio video and in the export audio video dialog box just uh, select what kind of audio file I want to export hit OK and the file will export and I'll have an audio file that has been processed through Amp and Cabinet uh, that will sound just like what I'm playing here in Ableton except I can take it and drop it into other audio programs that I have on my computer. I hope this has been useful to you guys and as always get in touch with me at brian at obedia.com or on Twitter at twitter.com forward slash obediatutor. Until next tutorial, take care. Thank you.